Bloodstone Subspecies 2 picks up right where the original left off, and our favourite vampire Radu once again has evil on the agenda. Don't worry though, because a powerful new force has arrived to stop him. The daughter of William Shatner. Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter and joining me as always is Tim. Thank you for having me back. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things we could be doing during the October thon and Tim has has hijacked the whole the whole month by wanting to do the subspecies movies. So we're here today to talk about Bloodstone <laughs> Subspecies 2. Uh, they're, they're trying to be fancy by putting the subtitle first. They're doing the the Lost World Jurassic Park kind of kind of thing here. Well, it worked out for them because I'm pretty sure this was up for an Academy Award. I I don't think that's true, Tim. <laughs> no, best Radu in a movie. <laughs> best Radu in a movie. <laughs> Something tells me that category was made just for subspecies, Tim. Just, just a sneaking, <laughs> just a sneaking feeling. But yes, welcome uh, to the show. Uh, we're, we're, oh, thank you. <laughs> Usually don't welcome me, but I was talking to the audience, Tim. Not, not you. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the show, everyone. We we did subspecies. We're here to do subspecies. My knock. <laughs> we did subspecies one. We're here mm. today to talk about subspecies two. Uh, which is the second of five in the franchise, and I know that we're at least going to do the third one as well this month, so look forward to that. I know I am. <laughs> yeah, we'll at least do the third, and at least the fourth, <laughs> and at least the fifth. <laughs> but no more beyond that. I can't promise anything else beyond, the, beyond that. I give Tim like this list of movies that had some heavy hitters, had some mm -hmm. recent films we need to do, and he keeps ignoring them and says, <laughs> I don't think I get a more depressing message than when Tim sent me a message saying, Peter, I've watched Subspecies 2, that's next. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why? Why? <laughs> Listen, I, we, we were trying to knock out like a lot of you know newer 2023 movies, right? Mm-hmm. And the fifth subspecies movie came out this year, so we got to work up to it. So it's, like, <laughs> it's not like this is all for naught, you know. This, like there, yeah. there's a reason behind this. <laughs> like we're we're you know we we said we wanted to cover, you know, the best of the best, the most classic horror franchises there are, and you know there was a, a new entry that you know got a lot of buzz, uh, you know, this year. So <laughs> you know I've, I've, it was something that we needed to do, you know. Quote unquote, a lot of buzz. I I want to see the receipts on this buzz that you're talking about. <laughs> That's, people are buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't in know the, if I believe in you. Some Timothy. of the sewing circles I've been in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I had to get the uh, the Full Moon Pictures um channel on Amazon Prime. They've got like their own little streaming <laughs> service, which is part of Prime. And, and it's only conveniently uh three hundred dollars for the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's just fairly pricey. It's like four four pounds a month. It's not it's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, but I I I I was looking through what else they had because like they have they have Puppet Master, they have subspecies, mm -hmm. they have transfers, and I'm like, but what else do of they course. have? They've got a bunch of cheap looking shit. Let's be honest. <laughs> and as I was looking through them, I was browsing before I started the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, there was like a lot where it was like, like you know a girl in a bikini or something on the poster looked really cheap but well, kind of sexy the name of that one <laughs> i'll have to double check for you <laughs> but i was thinking okay they've got a lot of just like you know tna and a to to bring in the audience for what's <laughs> probably going to be a really cheap movie and i actually clicked on one just to see like how cheap it looked because it looked i think it was actually like the mid 2000s it wasn't that new um, mm -hmm. But it was actually just straight up a softcore porno. Like, there were, like <laughs> I, I skipped five minutes in, and there was just a sex scene happening that was clearly oh. what, what the whole thing was. So, was one of the people in the sex scene Redu? Unfortunately, no, it was not. <laughs> so, don't forget to work the balls. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I laugh at like some places that have got their own streaming services. The idea that Full Moon think they've got enough to warrant a full streaming service, but it's like three B tier franchises and then just trash. 
as far as well, the eye can see. The, the thing that's funny to me is, yes, they have their own streaming service, but also, yes, 90% of their titles are on Tubi for free. So uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what the, you know, financial plan <laughs> for them is, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Tubi pays them the big advertising bucks. So that's, you know... I mean, they're they're getting a spike in uh, in my viewing this month. <laughs> oh yes, whoever's I'm... like you know do, doing the receipts over there, just like yeah, a lot of people are watching subspecies this month. And should we do a six movie? Or... Uh, and by proxy, they're getting a spike from me because uh, <laughs> I have to watch them since you decided to watch them. So here we are. Yeah. Uh, I'm so... surprised you didn't make it make a uh, a Buffy joke when they're talking about getting a spike, but okay. It's a vampire movie, Tim. I'll have, I'll have plenty of chances, okay? There's a lot of vampire stuff. There's a lot of slaying going on. Actually, there's not really a lot of either of those things. It's, for a vampire movie, it's actually quite subdued on those elements, but we'll get into all that. Uh, Some this, species. This one takes place after the first one. But when I say that, I mean like right after. Like It picks up just on like the night of. Although... Uh, the actress has changed from the main character of the last movie, and she's that like happens s- sometimes. She's like semi main character in this one. It's kind of her sister who mm-hmm. comes in, who's maybe kind of the main character. To be honest, the movie can't really decide which one we're supposed to focus on more. So both mm-hmm. of them feel kind of slightly shortchanged as far as how much development yeah. either of them get. But who who's the Shatner? Which one is Shat- Shatting it up? The sister who comes uh, to try and find. Uh, so so the sister who comes okay, in is Becky. Rebecca. Yeah, Michelle's the one from the first movie. So Rebecca comes in. She's played by Melanie Shatner, who is, she, yes... Someone was watching Full House when they wrote this script. <laughs> she, she is the daughter of William Shatner. Uh, mm-hmm. I did not recognize anything of Shatner in her. I did not notice any acting sensibilities. Mm-hmm. There was no weird dramatic pauses to note, but... She was the one we see naked, right? No. No, oh, okay. <laughs> no, no Michelle, Michelle was the one that had the random full frontal scene in the shower for no reason. That was yes. her. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen, like, a, a little bit of Bush in a movie. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Forgot that that's a thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. What was that? What was that? Uh documentary that uh the bowling for columbine oh, guys did. Men? oh um uh <laughs> after Fahrenheit that nine one one yeah that one yeah <laughs> is that the last time you saw a little bush in a movie tim <laughs> very good yeah <laughs> Do you know how hard it was trying to think of a movie that president bush was in <laughs> just so i could make that joke <laughs> well i mean he they literally made a movie about him called w <laughs> i don't recall this at all it was, uh, bu- 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 uh, what's his name? Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone. See, I guess that because he's done like four other direct <laughs> yeah. or four other president movies. Oh, uh, starring Thanos himself, Joshua Brolin. Joshua Brolin. Yeah. <laughs> Played two of the most vile <laughs> characters in history, George W. Bush and Thanos. <laughs> Uh, Oops, you... did we get too political? People got a thumbs down now? We'll do it. I dare you. <laughs> well, you think they're upset because you called Thanos one of the most evil people <laughs> in all of fiction? Well, that... <laughs> sure. <laughs> you was misunderstood. <laughs> okay, so, mm-hmm. yes, this movie follows both <laughs> Michelle from the first film, who is now a vampire... And also Rebecca, who's come to find and help her sister, uh, who ends up teaming up with a guy from the U.S. Embassy and a professor at the museum uh, to try and find out what happened to to Michelle and all of that. And meanwhile, uh, Michelle, when she leaves the, the, the palace at the start, takes the bloodstone with her. So Radu is very <laughs> upset and wants his bloodstone back. Hence the title, Bloodstone. Although... He also really cared about the Bloodstone in the first movie, so it doesn't really feel like it's unique to the sequel. So I don't know why it's called Bloodstone, other than the fact that he just thought it sounded good. But regardless, does, here we are. Am I forgetting something, but does the Bloodstone actually do something? Like, I remember you could drink from it, and, like, the king was drinking from it, so he didn't have to drink. 
other yeah, vampires' blood. But that, that, that's basically it. I mean, I, I think there's an implication <laughs> in the first movie that it also gives you power, but all we've ever really hmm. seen is that it kind of just creates blood for a vampire to drink so they don't have to <laughs> yeah. hurt anyone. So... Which is you, not what Redu wants to do. No, he, <laughs> he wants, wants to hurt people. He just wants it, but he, then he also wants to hurt people because he enjoys that. Mm. So, uh, actually, my big thing here, Tim, can I just, I want to get something off my chest as we start yeah, this Yeah, please get your review. big thing off your chest. I will get my big thing off my chest. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that is that we complained in the first movie, a movie that is called mm. Subspecies, and we're introduced to these little blood demons that come from Redu's blood. <laughs> that are the titular <laughs> subspecies and how little mm-hmm. they were actually used in that movie. Mm-hmm. Shoot, have you got a feeling where I'm going with this, Tim? <laughs> well, they have a very pivotal scene in the beginning of the film. Oh, yes. Yes, they have one pivotal scene right at the very start. <laughs> and then, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we ever see them again. No, I, I don't believe we do. <laughs> I don't have to add anything. That's my point. That's my point. <laughs> That's out there for everyone to see. Anyway, before we get any mm-hmm. further, we're technically spoiler-free territory right now. We're not doing spoilers mm-hmm. yet, so uh, I'll just it. I'll just ask Tim the, the question. <sighs> I so badly want to spoil something for these freaks <laughs> that listen to the show. <laughs> that was far too sexual sounding for my liking, Tim. <laughs> we have a very you know there's a very casual audience that likes to dip in whenever we do a big new popular movie but you know when we're doing something like the second subspecies movie it's only the hardcore freaks that are listening and those are the those are the listeners that we love the best (laughs) sound off in the comments if you're a hardcore freak (laughs) oh taking a turn Tim what did you think of subspecies (laughs) 2 Uh, you might be a little surprised, but I actually kind of dug this movie. Um, so the, uh, it has a, the opening is, is you know, it's kind of short, but it, I do think it is pretty cool. And the, the big complaint, you know, that we had about the first movie was that it was just a really dull middle section. Um, I, there are definitely parts of this movie that does get dull, but I didn't feel it as much uh, as I did with the first movie. Uh, I thought this one was definitely uh, a bit more exciting. Um, they introduce uh, a new character who, uh, yeah, I really like. You know, the first one, uh, you know, I mentioned a lot just how much I love Radu and that, you know, I just wanted to be the Radu show. And I, I do think we get more Radu and then also introduced to, uh, well, I, just, I guess I'll just go say this, uh, this mummy character who I, I also think uh, is just like, a straight up freak but is really fun uh, uh, to watch um uh they do pull something in the beginning that that is a little shitty uh a little alien uh cubed esque kind of uh thing let's say um mm. <laughs> but uh i mean i didn't really care about that person anyway so I, i'm not <laughs> i guess I, that doesn't really bother me that much um I I don't mind Becky. I, I think yeah. Why why not? Like yeah, sister, put her in the movie. You know I usually say that, but um, the you know the you know friends that she makes along the way. I don't really care too much for. <laughs> they're they're pretty you know forgettable or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I think there is like some fun vampire stuff. And I don't know. I I, I don't know. The, <laughs> like obviously, I I think of something that you said. Um, during another review, which I, I don't know if it, it's out yet, because uh, man, we're recording so much stuff this month. You're welcome, uh, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of it may might be out of order. But you know, you mentioned something uh, when we were doing a, a review of a, a Jalo movie, and you you kind of said that like you know that you know that there's a ceiling that you can go with these type of movies that you know you can't really you know even when they're good or you like them you know you can only go so far. And I I do kind of feel similar with this where uh, yeah like it's you know a straight to video full moons <laughs> picture which doesn't mean it can't be enjoyable but yeah there's like only you know so high that you can go on it uh, i probably sound like i'm giving my final thoughts and rankings right now but don't worry i'm not gonna but uh i, I was just thinking about that because it's like uh yeah I, I uh you know i'm not saying it's a perfect masterpiece or anything but i actually did have fun uh watching this for what it was uh and i, I would say more so than the second one um more so than the third one who knows i, I watch it already but i won't spoil any 
uh, feelings about that. You can't, you can't be spoiling. Um, did we be, that's, we're doing that soon, Tim. I'm you not, can't I'm not spoiling that. anything. I, I said, I specifically said I'm not spoiling yeah, it, okay. even though you know these hardcore freaks really want it spoiled to them. They said, spoil me, daddy. Be like, no, no. <laughs> you must wait your chance. Uh, so, the <laughs> uh, one thing I will say, um, I don't think this is a spoiler, but um, you know, you said this movie picks up right where the last one left off. I will say the third movie does the exact same thing, and you probably could have condensed, you know, these first three movies. I, I haven't seen the fourth one, so I don't know if it's right after as well. But you probably could have condensed these all into one movie, uh, which, like, yeah, you know, if you cut out some of the dull parts and the characters aren't as interesting, uh, I think maybe there could have been a really solid, like, epic. Two and a half hour some, oh, one species movie. Oh god! Uh, no, no, that sounds awful, Tim. One of the few benefits mm. these movies have is that they're eighty-five minutes and they don't dare. That's true. Go over that's it. That's true. <laughs> okay, but you go now. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit better than the first one. Hell yeah, <laughs> same page, <laughs> same page, bros. Uh, I, don't I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. if it was quite the same page. It's it's. People want to start making T-shirts. Same page, bro, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> same page, brothers. I like the movie. There's a lot of similar things to the first one. It has a mm -hmm. pretty solid practical effect in the opening scene, and then does mm -hmm. nothing remotely similar to it the rest of the movie. The first one did that too, right? Very true. Right. <laughs> so this movie does that again. It. It, it, it uses a lot of the same locations, so clearly the reason why they made this mm -hmm. franchise in the first place is because they had access to these like, old buildings that are in a field mm -hmm. somewhere in Romania, which, you know, fair enough, right? <laughs> Use what you mm -hmm. can. It does at least give some variety this time because there's some stuff at a hotel, there's some stuff in the city. It's mm -hmm. a little bit more diverse in terms of location, uh, mm -hmm. but it does take some wild swings. Uh, mm -hmm. Overall, I'd say it's better. There was definitely still times, though, where I was getting a little bit, like bored or my attention was starting to to wane and for sure yeah it's you know, not perfect I, you know it, it's definitely a put on whilst you're doing something else movie obviously mm -hmm. i was paying full attention to it because we were going to talk about it but sometimes with you know when we do a movie like this i'm like oh god this is clearly this is definitely something you have mm -hmm. to be like playing a video game or something while you're watching it because it's just oh yeah, yeah. it's not get enough mm -hmm. there's not enough meat in the bone to really mm -hmm. just pay attention to it fully uh, which is, it's kind of amazing that these kind of just okay but watchable movies almost have this new lease of life <coughs> in the modern day. Because in the modern day, we have all these options of, of listening to podcasts or playing video games mm -hmm. or doing the second screen experience, right? Mm -hmm. Back when this came out and you put it on, like, it was the, it was the Stone Age. You didn't have podcasts <laughs> to listen to. You didn't have handheld. I mean, you may have had a Game Boy, I suppose, but like... <laughs> I mean, like, that's all you had. You had Tetris. You had old school. And Tetris is great. Don't get me wrong. But that's all you had. So, yeah. you know, in that sense, if you want some background fodder and mm -hmm. you have access to uh, subspecies too, then sure, it's it's perfectly <laughs> fine. Uh, but there's also some, some swings here. There's some things that feel like a retcon the first movie. Like, so just to give an example here, somewhere in the middle of the movie, Rebecca, the sister, and Mel, the guy from the U U.S. Embassy, they go to the museum, and this was the museum mm -hmm. that gave the girls in the first movie their placement at this, you know, palace to study it, right? This was the local mm -hmm. museum that kind of, like, gave them all that permission and whatever. And they go and talk mm -hmm. to this this guy, this professor, and he's going on a bit, he's professor. talking about his booze and whatever else he's saying, and mm -hmm. they ask him oh, can you tell us what they were out there studying, what my sister and her friends were studying? And this guy, the first thing he says is, yes, vampires. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I seem to recall in the first movie them never uttering that word. All they ever said was we're here to study history and folklore and, and the ruins. They never, ever once talked about vampires. Even once Radu was around, I don't even think they used the word vampire. But all of a sudden, this guy's like, yeah, they were out there looking for vampires. Where are they? I don't believe you, sir. I don't believe you one bit. That definitely sounds like a guy that knows too much who just slipped up. He's like, oh, no, shit. I should have just said history. Oh, now they're going to know there's vampires here. Oh, dear. So, yeah, that, that was I should a say vampire. Oddball like, moment. 
<laughs> I, I do wonder like how many vampires are in this world like it feels like there might just be a couple <laughs> like well, in the first movie like the yeah you know, the king well, he was like the king of the vampires but it's like where are your your subjects sir <laughs> um well there's two in this one technically because michelle's a vampire yeah. mm-hmm. she's round about being all vampire but uh yeah so it's a it's a weird movie uh it, it yeah spoilers everyone you ready for spoilers <laughs> i mean what else is there to talk about like, with the, like... um th- this might sound crazy to say but there were like some generally like good shots <laughs> like I, I thought in this movie like uh there was a couple of times where i was like oh like i thought that looked pretty cool like like early on there's like kind of like like the first you know 15 20 is 20 ish it's minutes or, or whatever of the movie uh you know essentially it's kind of like this chase scene between you know michelle and radu and like there's a scene where you know she's running away and you know this train's going by in the background and then you see like radu's shadow like you know, um, large and looming, like over the train as it passes by. And I was like, you know, I, I generally think like this looks pretty cool. So I don't know, like, I, you know, it, it's not like that for the whole movie, but the, you know, there's little instances like here and there that I thought like, oh, I, I will admire the, you know, filmmaking <laughs> for this movie, which, you know, is not something you always expect to, to see <laughs> when you're watching subspecies too, but. Yeah, there's kind of in a vacuum. I wouldn't say that there's good scenes per se, but there's definitely mm-hmm. individual shots that are not bad. Uh, yeah, and that was kind of true in the first one as well. To be fair, and it is like the actual locations where Radu comes from is is the same places. I recognize the little archway. I recognize the bedroom mm-hmm. that the girls were staying in. Um, like all of it was clearly the same on location place that they had access to. Uh, even mm-hmm. though they they at least realized they had to shake it up by having more locations in the second one because yeah. if it was just them like hanging out around the fields around this palace again i'd have been like ready to, like throw something at the tv <laughs> i'd have been very very upset tim so hopefully not a cat no not a cat i'll I'll throw them at many things but not a tv <laughs> so yeah i yeah i think we'll just give the spoiler warning and start talking through it it's just not like, spoilers aren't a big deal for this one, really. I mean, we've dodged talking about the bigger things, but honestly, it's not... It's kind of spoiler-proof I mean, in a lot of ways. <laughs> to be honest, you could uh, explain the plot... Like, you could explain or basically say everything that happens in this movie in, like, probably two or three minutes. Like, I yeah, like I did enjoy the movie, but I wouldn't say a ton really happens <laughs> in it. No, and that was a problem in the first one. I, I felt it again here where... I looked at the time and saw there was ten minutes left, and I went, "Wait, we're at the climax." I feel like we've not, we've not. And it's not that it's it's, it's too short. It's not like plenty yeah. of movies can you know build to a climax in ninety minutes, but it's like a it's like a script that has erectile dysfunction. It just it can't do there. It can't get to full mass and and finish. <laughs> you know what it really does feel like, um, especially since again, you know, these movies all seem to take place right after you know one ends is it really does feel more like a a series instead of like mm. you know like like i could see this uh yeah you know, it's like a limited horror series on netflix or, or something where one episode just leads right into the next or something like that yeah i hope part five doesn't take place right after four because it was made like 25 years later <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that might stick out is a bit weird yeah so uh we shall see so yeah, spoilers for subspecies two. You have been warned. All the rest of it. Blah blah blah. Uh, so, I told you my favorite subspecies before, right? Go on. You know, uh, turkey, a little bit of cheese, some bacon. As in a sub sandwich. I, I get yes. It. I get it. <laughs> You're far too proud of that. <laughs> far too proud of it. Anyway, so the movie opens with uh, Michelle narrating. She never does this again, by the way. It's just the opening scene where she's like, mm-hmm. ah, these things happened in the last movie, and I was turned You're into a vampire. You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> All my life, I always wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> I suppose it would be vampire in this case. <laughs> Oh, that'd be like uh like if Guillermo was <laughs> narrating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I as in from what we do in the shadows, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I thought Del Toro at first, then I thought oh, no 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 he means he means yeah. uh, from 
from uh, what we did in Shadows. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> she explains what happened in the last movie, and she wakes up, and we quickly see that, it, okay, it's not her. It's a different actress. Fair enough. Uh, maybe the other actress just didn't want to come back. Maybe she wasn't paid well enough. Maybe she was told you're doing full frontal, and she's like, nope, I'm out of here. <laughs> and then this actress was like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, How many people will see this? Oh, that's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I, I, it's just glaring because she she's topless in one scene and then full frontal mm-hmm. in another scene, and both times they're just so unnecessary because it's just like mm-hmm. let's just watch her get changed, and I'm like we don't need to see this. Like you, yeah. you could just <laughs> show her grabbing some things with her hands and then cut to her walking out fully dressed. Like we you don't need yeah. to show like the process. <laughs> like. You, you could show her, like, starting to take off her clothes and then, like, like a, a bunch of bats, like, come and fly <laughs> in front of her and they say, like, uh-uh-uh, not so, not so fast. <laughs> they're talking bats in this scenario, Tim? Well, yeah, the, the vampire bats. <laughs> <laughs> so... But it's only whenever, like, nudity is on screen. They just, they just fly over and then talk to the kids mm. watching at home. Before Michelle wakes up, though, because she's in the coffin mm. right now, and she had, remember, she had Stefan. in the coffin? She had Stefan. Uh, that's good timing. We just started our David Fincher season on the Collector's Cut, so you can go oh. and check out our thoughts on Seven, <laughs> which we've been out in the first week of October. Nice. Yeah. Tim didn't uh, even mean to do that. He just stumbled <laughs> on it. Uh, did, did you start with Alien 3, or I'm assuming you already covered that on Ace. Did you yeah. not want to double up? We already did that in Ace, so we started with Seven. Uh, okay. And we, we we will have done every single Fincher movie on Collector's Cut, barring Alien 3, which was already on Ace. And the only mm-hmm. thing we're skipping for now is the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo remake, because we'll do that with the other Dragon Tattoo movies someday. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you mean approved. like the, the original... Is it Swedish movies? There was a trilogy from Sweden, and then there was yeah. a weird reboot after the Fincher one that tried to like bring it back again. An American? Yeah. One? Yeah. So, so Fincher oh, did an American one in twenty twelve ish. Yeah. And then it was like three or four years ago they tried to do like a reboot. It was called The Girl Who Kicked the Spider's Nest. I want to say. Oh, okay. Okay. That sounds. And, and it was a different actress. It was a whole different team, but uh, they huh. tried to reboot it, uh, and obviously it didn't do that well because. There's been not a single word of it anymore. Uh, that's a shame. <laughs> I miss the girl franchise. Is this some sort of weird attempt at a boy reference? <laughs> no. If I was if I was if I was gonna talk about the boy, I would simply talk about the boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, so the important thing here is that before Michelle wakes up, uh, mm-hmm. Radu, you know, gets put back to because he was decapitated. For those of you who don't remember from right. the last movie, he was decapitated. Uh, although the, the end of the movie clearly showed him like winking or something to imply, oh, he's not really dead. He'll be fine. <laughs> he just needs to pull himself together. And this is the only time in the whole movie you see the subspecies, the little blood mm. gremlins come out, and they blood basically <laughs> connect his. Actually, maybe this is why I don't see them again. Do they actually become the tendons that reconnect his head to his neck? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, they, they are like his blood. So maybe once they do their task or whatever, they're reabsorbed back into the body. Or but it, it is called, I mean, it's the subspecies franchise. You'd think it, they'd find that a reason to bring them back out by the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like in the Home Alone franchise he's not always home alone you know he isn't the only two that matter <laughs> okay technically the second one he's not at home but you know he's still right, alone yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah but that always bugged me with the third one is when you get to the third mm-hmm. home alone and he's not left alone when the parents go away for a week or anything like that he's just alone during the day while the mum's at work and i'm like that's not really home alone <laughs> that's just that's a few true. hours what are you talking about yeah <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, <laughs> I assume you do that on uh, um, Collector's Cut at some point. <laughs> we actually are doing it next month. Well, uh, I say next month. We're doing it in December for Christmas, obviously. 
<laughs> have fun with that. Somehow Tim has stumbled onto what we're currently doing in Collector's Cut and what we're doing next on Collector's <laughs> Cut without any prompts and any knowledge of what we're actually doing. I told you, I got my ear to the buzz. I, I hear I hear things. Uh-huh, yes, okay. <laughs> well. You think I don't show up for those mild fuzz monthly <laughs> meetings? <laughs> I mean, I don't show up for them, so I, <laughs> I'm very impressed that you do. And it's mostly me and Connor. <laughs> what the hell do you two even talk about? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> we don't have a lot in common. It's just a lot of silence and looking at our phones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, yeah, this, this is the one big practical effect in the movie mm. is watching the uh, this, you know, prosthetic head be connected to the body and there's all these blood tendons that start to sort of yeah. pull it in. Credit where credit's due. It it looks cool. Like it it is generally like pretty awesome. <laughs> it's a fun effect. And this is like much like the first movie with the cutting off the fingers and then all the blood mm -hmm. demons you know coming to be. It, this again has this big scene at the start where they spent most of their money and then the rest of the movie has <laughs> nothing on yeah. on even remotely the same par as this. <laughs> Very true. So I can't wait to see if three does the same thing. Uh, don't spoil it. You keep it to yourself. That's supposed to okay. be watching ahead anyway, you filthy animal. Let's <laughs> wait for something. I then have an insult prepared, okay? I have to come mm -hmm. up with that on the spot. Sometimes it's not easy. Well, I mean, I did kind of think we were going to record these back to back, so I, I, I don't try to go ahead normally. <laughs> Okay, it's a fair point. There was a small chance we might do that, but I didn't have time, okay? It's been a very busy... Between recording like two or three times a week with you, between uh, the weekly or the daily TV reviews, there's, there's new shows on. I'm having Daily? To, dear God. I'm having to do uh, some extra shows as well that just started. It's been a very I, busy time, very busy month. I feel like... Every other show should take a break in October. Like October should be our time. Like we, we don't need these distractions. Like yeah, this is our time. It's our time down here. <laughs> I'm assuming that's a reference from something, but I don't. Get it. <laughs> it's the Guineas, Tim. <laughs> oh man. What do you mean? Eh. What's, 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 eh. Eh, it's not that good. <laughs> you shut your filthy mouth. We talking about it's not that good. It's the Guineas. It's overrated. <laughs> so's your mother <laughs> <laughs> no comeback just a, a sad acceptance of the fact <laughs> I mean I, I, I'm, I'm too close to her I, I can't I can't vouch for how other people uh, perceive her accomplishments <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Speaking of weirdos and their mothers, uh, <laughs> Radu's Good got sex. a mother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently, she wasn't mentioned in the first movie. We didn't even know he had a mother in the first movie. Yeah. It's like, ugh. Which, how does uh, this even work? So, how can a vampire have two parents? Mm. Like, well, as, usually, as, most people have two parents, a mom and a dad. No, but as a vampire, I assumed, like, the king was his dad because he sired him. He turned him into a vampire. You can't have oh, a mummy and okay. daddy sire, which means that they had him as a normal baby, but he's somehow a vampire? Um, I mean, I think we're going to have to go by the only other source on the subject we have, which, unfortunately, is going to be Twilight. Uh <laughs> 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 the king could have you know made love to her when she was a human and then had to have turned her because the vampire fetus was eating her alive from the inside out she does look pretty rough to be fair this mummy character <laughs> does look like she's de you know de uh what's the phrase decomposing at a rapid rate yeah. <laughs> uh so it's yeah it's just weird it's like because he, he, he follows uh michelle who michelle runs away we get a bit of a chase sequence mm -hmm. she goes on a train he chases the train uh, he, Radu has a new superpower in this one that he didn't have in the last one where he turns into a shadow and then apparently can travel mm -hmm. as a shadow large mm -hmm. distances because we see him do it <laughs> the first time it's just kind of implied but later on you actually see mm -hmm. like a shot where he turns into the shadow on the wall and it's like okay I guess he can do this mm -hmm. now 
That never came up in the first one, but all right. So maybe that's what the bloodstone does. But he doesn't have the bloodstone for most of this movie. He had it for a little bit. <laughs> maybe it, it it lasts for like twenty four hours or something. Oh, he still got the gist from it. Is that, yeah. what, you, is that what you said? Exactly. Uh, so he follows he follows Michelle to the city, uh, Bucharesti or something like that. What you say it was called? Like boop. Bucharest or something? It wasn't Budacrest, because I know Budacrest. It was like a slightly... Okay. It, was, it was sounded kind of... It looked kind of like that, but it, had, it ended <laughs> in an I. It was slightly different. <laughs> Buca de Beppo. <laughs> Baba di Pupi. No, that's my Italian accent. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, phrase that I get. You know, you, 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 Baba di Pupi gets you into the, the rhythm. <laughs> ba, 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 Baba de Duke. <laughs> the Baba de Duke. <laughs> the Baba de... <laughs> Do the Italians remake the Baba Duke, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they did. <laughs> <laughs> is the Baba Duke, <laughs> the Baba Duke. <laughs> so he's got his power, but when he's in here, apparently this is where his mummy lives, like the crypt that his mummy's in is nearby the city. So he goes and visits her, and she's like doing alchemy, and she's got like all these like test tubes and these big like orbs and cauldrons out, and he's like, "Mother, <laughs> I have killed father." The vampire kingdom is mine. <laughs> and she's like, and what of your horrible half-brother? He is Dust's mother. So it's like, okay, she's happy with everything he did in the first movie. But then she says, and the bloodstone? And she's like, Stefan's uh, uh, check. She stole it from me. <laughs> his side piece I think it was Coruscant I think he said but um, yeah actually we didn't even mention that so the opening of the movie he kills Stefan mm -hmm. while he's sleeping in a coffin before Michelle wakes up he just stabs him and he turns into a skeleton and he's like it's actually quite comical how he is just very very quickly nothing but a skeleton and I mm -hmm. assume they didn't have the actor back uh, which actually the, the the dead bodies of the other women from the first movie were still lying around in the opening <laughs> scene and I was thinking these are probably different actors as well because why would they go to the effort of getting the same ones back oh, sure. when, when the main character is not even the same one yeah but it would just put the weird little oddity that they did get those actors back even though they couldn't get the, <laughs> the actual star who's going to be in the rest of the movie they couldn't get yeah. back but yeah now how mad were you when like in you know the first like three minutes of this movie they already kill fan favorite stefan is that, is that a serious question uh, <laughs> uh i don't think anyone gave a shit about stefan and <laughs> did not give a shit about how he died that's mm -hmm. my stance on the on the matter Oof, i mean i don't want to argue but uh and i do feel bad for insert name of actor who played stefan here you sure this isn't just a, a a blessing for him maybe maybe he maybe he like went on to star in like the ginger dead man or some other full uh full moon feature so i was looking at the cast of the movie and i was thinking oh we spent some time talking about uh the shatner uh, daughter mm. <laughs> what about what about yes. the who, who, what about this new actress playing michelle has she done anything mm. notable and I clicked on her name here, right? And she's mm. in a bunch of things. It's a bit racy for TV. She's in something called Silk Stockings. She's in... I like, I never watched that, but I, I think, like, growing up, that was always, like, a... You know, ooh, that was, like, a sexy show for adults. Yeah. Not actual porn, but just a bit racy, I assume. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she was in something called Frogtown 2, which I'm assuming is a sequel to Hell Comes to Frogtown, starring Roddy Piper. Uh... Yeah, I mean, Which, I, I had no idea they did a sequel. That, that is now, now to me. I but I've clicked on it. So this this lady's in it, but so is Robert Zadar. You know him and had that chin. What is, what is he from? I don't recognize the name. Samurai Cop, man. Come on. Oh, oh my God, yes. And okay. also Maniac <laughs> Cop as well, which is the main thing I know him from, actually. Uh, which I guess we have to do the Maniac Cops at some point. We, we, we really yes, please. should do those. Uh, yeah. Also, Lou Ferrang was in this. Uh Ooh. And Brian James and Charles Napier. Oh God, you probably don't even recognize these names, but I, I guarantee you, those last two well, names I mentioned, you know their faces. On Charles Napier, I I know because he was a, a voice on the the critic. Uh, ah, so okay. I, I know him from that. Um, but yeah, the the other one though, I didn't recognize. 
Ryan James, you've definitely seen him and stuff. He was in a couple of Tales from the Crypt episodes, and oh, he's in House okay. 3, and he's he's been in some other stuff. Oh, oh he's in Fifth okay. Element, actually. He's got a role in Fifth Element. That's probably like one of his bigger, more higher-profile things that he's done. <laughs> Uh, I, so, don't, I don't know if I ever finished that movie to be honest yeah. did what? not care for it what Fifth Element? yeah <laughs> you're just full of bad takes today you know that? <laughs> I feel like I, I tried watching it like a couple of times and was just like yeah, it's not doing it for anything that, for this is why you're on the horror podcast Tim and not the other ones because I'd be very upset with you and the other movie shows <laughs> based on the opinions you're whipping out tonight right? Uh, you'll be delighted to know though that she does go on to be in uh well, she's in a movie called Blood Fist 5, which is irrelevant except for the fact that it says blood, so it caught my eye. But <laughs> that sounds good. She's in Species, Subspecies 3, she's yes. in Subspecies 4, and yes. <laughs> I don't think she came back... Oh no, she did come back for the new one. Oh, never mind. She's in, she's in the rest of the franchise. We're never getting oh, rid of Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I, I, I'm, I'm happy, you know, she's a good person <laughs> what <laughs> what are you talking about I don't know personally but I can tell from her face and her boobs <laughs> sure <laughs> I, I looked away during that scene you know, you know me, <laughs> I love the idea you were sitting watching this with the wife and the wife just puts her hand <laughs> over your eyes like no avert your eyes Tim yeah, <laughs> I'm a married man now. I can't be looking at other women that way. <laughs> Come on, movie. <laughs> I just I'm laughing because I'm imagining her doing that, but the two kids are sitting in front of you, and she's not covering their eyes. She's just covering your eyes. All right, well, they gotta learn. So they need education. Yeah, they need sex yeah. education. It's important for a growing mind. <laughs> You, you're, you're though, you're a rich though. If you look at too many boobs now, you're a dirty old man, and she doesn't want that. It's true. Yeah. She wants you to remain pure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What the hell are we talking about in this movie? Okay, so Michelle has come to the city. Uh, Radu's <clears throat> followed and went to visit Mummy, who's like, "Get me." Oh, I'm, I'm doing my Radu voice on. Get me. <laughs> the bloodstone <laughs> and he's like yes mummy and that, that's what really got me is that he says mummy he doesn't say mother mm. he doesn't say something or something he says mummy he says it like he's a child <laughs> I, I, that really stuck out to me well you know it's a it's a nod to the classic horror character the mummy <laughs> <laughs> it's a very meta horror series uh, sure so uh, I, I will say, you know, as much as, you know, the, my big takeaway from the first movie was just like how much I love Brad Du. He's just such an over the top, like chewing scenery kind of character. And it just, you know, just have so much fun anytime he's on screen. And then this movie, it's like double it because, you know, Mummy as well is just like, you know, again, just so like gross looking and so unabashedly evil and you know she's fun to watch he's fun to watch and like when they're together i'm just like i'm having a good time like i just watch these freaks you know talk about anything for a you know a half an hour it's it's good to me it is good okay well we don't see radu again for a while so uh, hopefully you got your fill at this point because we have a lot to do with the other character mm -hmm. michelle phones her sister and tells her she needs her help and then she goes to stay in a hotel room I guess she had money with her, which I, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. She also bought a train ticket, so I guess yeah, she does have her her wallet, wallet or whatever. But uh, she, she, she in the bedroom. She ever considers the fact that when the sunlight comes up, it's going to be a problem. So she mm -hmm. starts obviously feeling pain with the sunlight, and she goes and hides in the bathroom mm -hmm. and falls asleep in the bathtub. And then when two maids show up a little bit later, they find her and think she's dead mm -hmm. because she looks dead. <laughs> she's not moving. <laughs> Uh, and the police even think she's dead. And they put her in, uh, not an ambulance per se, but, uh, you know, the, the coroner's van. And she ends up waking up halfway to the morgue and runs out. Uh, causes a car crash because the, the driver freaks out, as you might when you think someone's <laughs> dead. And they just sit up yeah. like they're Michael Myers. Uh, but she freaks out. <laughs> and she actually runs to a museum, goes to the basement, mm -hmm. and finds a coffin there to sleep in 
<laughs> and I'm like, surely the important part's just that you're out of the sunlight. Not that you're in a coffin. Because hell, even Radu, we see him sleeping in this movie and he's just mm-hmm. like on the concrete under like a crypt. He's not even in a coffin. And uh, which, <coughs> and not only that, this coffin she sleeps in, I don't know if you noticed anything specific details about this coffin. If you were to describe this coffin with one key detail, what might you mention, Tim? You might mention that mm. the lid is made of glass and is <laughs> see-through, which... I get that it's already in a basement, so it probably doesn't matter. But mm. you know, if the whole point <laughs> is to is your, yeah, yeah, if the whole point is to guard out the sun, a glass coffin doesn't seem like a good idea. Michelle's not too bright, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. <laughs> now I, I will give her a little credit because uh, I do feel like you kind of see vampires walking around at all hours of the day <laughs> in, in these movies. <laughs> like, there's been plenty of scenes where, you know. Radu's walking out like when it's very clearly not nighttime. <laughs> oh, even the first time he lies down in this movie, he, he realizes the sun's coming up, so he sort of crawls back to his crypt and he goes down the mm-hmm. stairs and all that. When he gets to where he's sleeping, there's like a beam of light hitting where he's lying, and I'm like, there's no lights in here, <laughs> so what is that if not sunlight? That has to be sunlight. There's nothing else that could be, but it doesn't seem to bother him, so <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um,. You know, and then the, it was something I was kind of confused with, like the first movie, because I feel like there is vampire lore where, like, you know, vampires need to sleep in like a coffin that has like, you know, spe- they're like specific, uh, like dirt or whatever, like from their mm. grave or, or whatever. Um, so for a while, I, I, I think, I think that, you know, with the first movie or, or whatever, that I kind of thought they had something like that because it seemed like he would, it would be important for him to, yeah, like make it to his, uh, you know, grave when, when, uh, or a uh, coffin or whatever when nighttime comes. But yeah, I guess it seems like no, it just they just have to be in a. Well, I guess they don't have to be in a coffin because yeah, as long as they're away yeah, from the light you... or whatever. But they seem like they need to. They, they want to go to coffins like they're drawn to it. It's I don't know. It's weird. It's this not... movie doesn't really set down a lot of vampire rules, and it's not consistent with the ones that it does kind of imply. You know, like yeah. what, what works for Radu doesn't work for Michelle. Yeah, <laughs> what works for Michelle doesn't work for Radu. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to get a, a grasp, grasp, grasp on these things. Uh, mm. Michelle's thing in the middle of the movie because it kind of shifts to being her sister's movie for a good while. But Michelle's mm-hmm. thing when she wakes up is that she just kind of goes wandering, and like obviously he's like starting to like feel thirst, so she's like looking mm. at people, and she follows this sort of punk rock looking guy into like a metal club, and. Mm starts kissing him and is like tempted to bite him but then sort of like runs away in fear like oh no i can't do that i don't want to be a killer so she runs out and uh just sort of yeah runs away that's basically it uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then, then then she runs into her sister eventually so i guess we'll go back and talk about the sisters to build up to that point her mm-hmm. side of things the uh, rebecca arrives goes looking for her sister goes to the hotel and when she gets to the hotel they say sit there and someone will be with you and eventually it's the policeman who comes in and comes up to talk to her it's like now i must apologize we thought your sister was dead but she woke up on the way to the morgue <laughs> we don't actually hear this conversation he just kind of starts and we cut away and then we come back when he's at the end of the story uh but this guy also shown up from the u.s embassy named mel who i guess is kind of rebecca's love interest but they don't really like do yeah. anything with it i i, I kind of get the feeling and I guess you'll know this, but I kind of get the feeling they're leaving some of this for the third one because he just doesn't, he's just not involved in the last act. He just kind of disappears at a certain point. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll be honest, like some of the, some of these two movies did kind of blend together. So I'll be careful mm. and not, you know, mention anything. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> So they go looking for information on what she was doing. That's when they go to the, the guy at the museum who then takes them to the palace where the girls were in the first movie and they go looking around uh he's explaining stuff although he says like three or four times that he just can't remember something which is like you're very <laughs> useful as a historian you are if you just can't remember anything <laughs> but they go into the, the main place where radu lives and radu actually shows up at the top of the stairs he's came all the way back <laughs> and because because his mom told him to come back and burn the bodies <laughs> of the others so he just kind of says you are trespassing leave at once he doesn't kill them he just asks them to leave 
Uh, and they, they do, they do, they leave. That that that. It's getting soft in his old age. That was that. That was the whole exciting adventure. <laughs> and it's when they're back at the hotel, or Rebecca gets back to the hotel. She sees her sister watching from across the street, and this is where the two plots intersect. And she goes across, and she asks what's happened, and Michelle just kind of keeps giving her cryptic answers, and doesn't really say anything. Just say you're a vampire. I know. <laughs> So Rebecca whips out the bloodstone and says, what's this? Because they've been really curious about it because it was in uh, Michelle's bag. And the policeman is convinced she stole it from somewhere, even though no one's reported such a thing missing. <laughs> he just thinks it looks expensive and therefore it must be stolen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but immediately Michelle grabs it and starts, you know, like drinking the blood from it. Uh, or, or just, I don't know if she drinks it from this scene, but she drinks from it soon. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, Radu shows up in this scene and comes after Michelle, and specifically the Bloodstone. So, mm -hmm. that's that's that. I don't remember what happened next. <laughs> Does it just go right <laughs> into, like, the final battle? No, <laughs> no. That... That's the thing. It kind of resets, yeah. and okay. Rebecca goes... Does she, should she hide the Bloodstone with uh, Becky, then? No, I don't think like so. she gets it for a bit? No, no. Uh, Rebecca just okay. Rebecca just starts investigating it again the next day, and she tells mm -hmm. uh, Mel and the detective that she saw her sister last night, and they don't really mm -hmm. react to it. Like you would think that if she said that, they would go looking for like clues to where she went from. <laughs> Will that cat stop jumping backwards and forwards across the camera? <laughs> it's annoying me. <laughs> hey, I, I can't control this thing <laughs> any more than you can. <laughs> he's done it like five times in the last minute <laughs> jesus christ it's a microphone not a hurdle okay <laughs> anyway uh she so they they go researching more they go looking to talk like read more books about vampires the professors like telling them more about vampires and takes them back to the palace uh eventually i think this is definitely like the i don't know the the most dull the movie gets uh, I would say at this point, um, yeah I mean if if you're not talking about Radu or Mummy like yeah I, I I'm sorry you know Becky's fine but like you know, this whole little you know group of characters or whatever the any time it kind of focuses on them for a long while that's when the movie really dips in the wanting to pay attention. <laughs> of it all which is a lot of the middle of the movie to be fair especially mm -hmm. the back half of the middle because the like we, we just sort of keep investigating despite the fact that she's already seen michelle and it feels like why are we still investigating this other stuff when that seems like but sure enough the professor's got a book that talks about the king and the vampires and his two sons stefan and uh radu and that there's a mum somewhere and he kind of puts a lot of these things together meanwhile michelle wakes up thirsty again and this time does actually kill someone uh, and feeds on them. She goes to the same metal bar again and lures a guy back to the museum and then feeds on him. And she's not happy about it. She's very upset. Uh, but uh, before long, Radu shows up and takes her back to the palace that they all started at. So, actually, no, no I think it's where the mum lives. I think it's the mummy's crypt they go, they go to. And basically, the, the final part of the movie is that Rebecca brings the professor to kill Radu and save her sister mm -hmm. during the daytime, right? So it's broad daylight, mm -hmm. and he's like, there's nothing to worry about. It's broad daytime. Jesus. And I am going, to... <laughs> Tim, do something about that cat. <laughs> it's a wild beast. I can't control it. Throw it down on the floor. Be like, no, that's <laughs> off <it>. limits. <laughs> hey, yeah, can you step down? There, there you go. go. See, see, just a little nudge, a little encouragement is all you need. Well, back. back up. What? <laughs> Screw your cat. You're not in charge here. Tim's not even in charge. I'm in charge. Oh dear. <laughs> Do I say? Do I say? You little shit. <laughs> anyway, so they they're in and they're about to stake Radu as he's lying sleeping next mm -hmm. to Michelle. Uh, because that's where they're hanging out before they do whatever they're going to do when the sun sets. And the twist here, because there's like blood starts squirting out, but it's not Radu's blood. Mummy mm -hmm. apparently is not a vampire because she stabs him from behind the professor mm -hmm. and he's got, just got blood squirting everywhere. 
and then you know she grabs michelle the sun goes down and then next thing we know michelle's on a table tied up and radu and mummy radu are going to do something to her uh in fact i we glossed over this there was a scene in the middle of the movie where radu breaks into the hotel room where uh, rebecca's staying and like lifts mm-hmm. up her nighty and is about to bite her leg and it's just because the mm-hmm. phone rings that he goes oh no the phone <laughs> and he, he sort of like skedaddles out of the scene damn you phone <laughs> my one my one nemesis i think it's around here where you actually see him turn into a shadow because he, he's up at like a window and then he just sort of like fades away and then there's like a big shadow of him like moving down the wall mm-hmm. and i'm like okay i guess he can do that i guess that's yeah. his abilities fair enough <laughs> oh, but michelle wakes up comes to find her sister on this table and is like no don't do it and radu's like no come and bite her she's got a vein right here mm-hmm. a, an artery that pumps blood throughout the leg it'll squirt like a fountain if you bite into it <laughs> and he's, he really thinks this is going to like win her over uh but instead mm-hmm. she starts fighting mummy and sets mm-hmm. mummy on fire i do you know what see when the the mummy like corpse looking woman was attacking michelle mm-hmm. I was thinking she looks a little bit like the Crypt Keeper from Tales of the Crypt. I can see that, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have the same sense of humor, of course, uh, but d- different no. visual style. Yeah. Different visual style. So mm-hmm. uh, th- then, of course, she ends up fighting Radu. She stabs Radu in the face with a blade, multiple times, mm-hmm. in fact, and also stabs him in the hand at one point. And I was mm-hmm. thinking, oh, maybe some blood will come out of Radu and the subspecies will show up and do something and that'll be part of the climax. Could be fun. They did not. <laughs> she just stabs him a bunch and then stabs him, I, I, I guess, in the heart with some wood. To be honest, though, the thing she stabbed mm-hmm. him with looked like a blade, so I wasn't really sure why it seemed to kill him. At least... Well, again, we we have no idea what, like, the rules are in with these uh, vampires. We really don't. We really don't. So Rebecca is let off the table by Michelle. Mm-hmm. They go to the exit where the gate is, but it's sunlight and rebecca's like or michelle's like i can't go because of the sunlight and rebecca's mm-hmm. like, okay i'll wait until dark for you out here and it's like okay but then the movie just ends with mummy showing up all burned from her fire wounds mm-hmm. from before and she grabs michelle into the shadows and that's when the credits roll that's it it, it just mm-hmm. le- leaves there like none of this felt really like a climax i feel like i didn't really get to know no. either of the main characters enough to really be invested in what they were doing or saving themselves and the ending just kind of feels like <laughs> yeah you knew you were making a third one and you're just kind of yeah. because you didn't kill radu you, like you didn't even convince right. me you've done anything to him really he's just kind of out for like if, a minute yeah i mean well if he can come back from having his head chopped off like yeah just getting stabbed a couple of times is doesn't really feel too uh permanent no nah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense really i it's it's it, there's definitely it's a feeling that they do stuff that's just barely serviceable without really worrying if it actually feels like an ending because it doesn't feel like an ending for sure yeah i mean i don't know it's kind of hard to tell exactly like what <laughs> like people want uh in in this movie like it's like okay we know you want the bloodstone but why exactly like why is this so important like what do you want to do with it like it seems like they have like some big plans for it but i and I, I never really got exactly what why it is so important like you know if this is supposed to be you know to bring up thanos again like like if this is like you know the infinity gauntlet or whatever of this universe like you gotta let us know that like that's why they want it um it's just it's just very vague it has power that's literally all we hear like we have no understanding of what it will actually do beyond just feed them and we know that radu likes killing people anyway so he doesn't need it for that (laughs) Uh, if it, if anything, I guess the hope of the main characters is that they'll keep it for Michelle, so she can just live as a vampire without ever having a, you know, she oh, can sure, yeah. she can live like Stefan did, just feeding on yeah. the bloodstone, <laughs> not worrying about anything else. There you go. But and then uh, yeah, it, it is weird that like I don't know at points you know Becky and her group of friends, uh, her Scooby gang, like you know it does at points feel like you know they're taking over the movie then at points it feels like they they're dialing back and saying like oh no these aren't really the main characters just kidding um so like i don't know it, it kind of feels weird like sometimes when like you're focusing on them and then not focusing on them 
it, um, it is because it doesn't bounce back evenly to make it feel like it's a you know they're both main characters and we're switching between mm -hmm. but at the same time because it like starts off with mm -hmm. michelle for like 20 <laughs> minutes and then shifts to rebecca and then we kind of forget michelle exists for like 20 minutes or so it does yeah. feel like oh we've shifted main character but then whenever we shift back to the other one we, we stick with them for so much time that it, it does feel weird it doesn't it feels like both of them are, are missing for too long stretches of time to especially michelle i feel like michelle after the opening 20 minutes will be gone for a while and then get a few scenes and then be gone for a long time and she was the main character in the first one it doesn't feel like she was because it's a different actress like it's hard to actually think oh this is the same one from the last movie uh especially since correct me if i'm wrong didn't this character in the last movie have really short hair she might have i'm trying to think if it was i, I know like one of the group at, at the very least had short shorter hair yeah i think i think it was her uh, I, think, I think it was michelle yeah. because in this movie she does not have short hair she has long no. hair she has big volumetric hair and it's like what did her hair grow overnight because she's a vampire now <laughs> Like, that's what i mean that, that's my only justification if like yeah i guess when you become a vampire you just your looks change <laughs> like what can you say like you look like a different person yeah um I, I you know a lot of the cast of this one are back in the next one and the next one i believe is the same year i want to say yeah 1994 so i i oh, think yeah. i think they did two and three as like one big production or back-to-back -back productions because they sort of i think they signed everyone to a two movie deal so yeah and i uh, watching it it does feel like that yeah. yeah so i suspect that this feels more like a two-parter than it does mm -hmm. uh two individual movies which kind of and they, because they are quite cheap they feel like tv movies in a lot of ways and that's how tv movies oh, sometimes sure. feel yeah. so yeah, I guess I'm excited to see the conclusion of this. <laughs> well, it's not the end, obviously, because there's a four and five. Mm -hmm. uh, but four was a bit later. That was like 1998, and then five is 2023. So yeah. we'll see how what they do with those. Uh, but yeah. it ends like it ends with a cliffhanger. But I mean, uh, unlike you know, uh, across the Spider Verse, you you didn't have to wait, you know, like a whole other year for this one. To, to see the resolution <laughs> yeah but i bet people were wishing they did <laughs> they weren't they weren't ready they, they hadn't forgotten how bad the movie was yet to be excited for the next one <laughs> hey well i'm excited <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean it, it does feel strange uh watching these back to back because i i, I and uh, you know the first second and third movie they all do feel you know, very similar in a, in a lot of ways where you know some of the strengths are the same but some of the weaknesses uh, are also the same so it's a it's a little odd but hey you can do worse things with your time yeah but not by much <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I guess yeah i guess we're ready to rate because I, I don't think i've got anything left to say about this one in particular <laughs> It's it's slightly better than the first one because it has a little bit more variety in what it's doing, but there's still stretches where it's just characters talking. And what's worse is that when they're investigating stuff, they're mostly just investigating what happened in the first movie. So if you saw the first movie, you already know all the answers to what they're looking into. Like when they're asking yeah. the professor <laughs> questions and they're talking about, oh, what, what, what were they doing out here? What happened out here? We saw all this. So mm -hmm. it, it's actually tedious because we're not even getting any new information. It probably works better if you didn't see the first one. That's fair. But anyway, what are you rating Subspecies 2? Um, do you remember when I gave the first one? <laughs> I don't even... I can tell you. I've got my... Uh, my. Okay. Uh, you gave it 4.5, Tim. Okay. Um. Yeah, I... A lot of the weaknesses uh, are the same where, again, it is just... You know, there's stretches uh, in the middle of the movie where... It's just kind of uninteresting characters talking that you don't really care about. But again, the the Radu stuff and, and now introducing his mummy, uh, that stuff is so much fun to me that I did, you know, always got a little uh, little jolt uh, whenever they would appear on screen. I, I still think they were a ton of fun. Um, and then every now and again, there was like, you know, uh, something cool or interesting that happened. Uh, and, and again, there's like cool stuff in the beginning or whatever. So um, I... 
I, I didn't find this as much of a slog as the first one, like we kind of you know said several times now. Uh, so I, I I did find it more an enjoyable watch, but still, yeah, you know, kind of like a, a like I was uh, talking about earlier, um, you know, like like what how you had mentioned as as well with the other movie, uh, that you know, there's only a, as uh, you know a ceiling to as high uh, how high you can go with these movies, like you know, you can't you know <laughs> you know go too too high, even though I, I did kind of enjoy this one. Uh, but I'll give it, I think, a 5.5. Just, uh, yeah, just, just a little bit better than the first one. Still has problems. Still not a best movie by far. But uh, I don't know. It was watchable. And uh, I, I got some more Redu, which I uh, enjoyed. And every now and again, there's a cool thing. So, uh, yeah, that's not a horrible score <laughs> for this type of movie, I suppose. I guess I'll go slightly higher than my last score. I'll say 4.5 for this one. It's a little <laughs> bit better. There's a little bit more variety. Uh, it does feel like there's kind of more of a plot. But although it's a lot of deceiving because mm -hmm. at times they're just kind of like re re going over what happened in the first movie. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. Like this might be the ceiling of the franchise. I, like I, I would love nothing <laughs> more than to be pleasantly surprised that 4 or the newer one is kind of like a, <laughs> a solid movie. But I'm not holding my breath at this point. They're, they're kind of <laughs> rough. But, I mean, I've seen worse, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I've seen worse. Still better than Twilight, I guess. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. That's Bloodstone, Subspecies 2, and Tim's, mm. I think, when he forced me to do more of these throughout October, so look forward to more. <laughs> uh, so, yes, but we have some other things planned, I'm happy to say. We've got a Halloween-themed, or Halloween-set movie, I should say, for Halloween mm -hmm. itself. Um, we're hopefully going to get to a couple other 2023 releases that we've not gotten to yet, <laughs> whether they be from earlier in the year or even brand new releases, just kind of depends. We're going to squeeze in as much as we can, so hopefully you keep enjoying Oktoberthon. And you can support all of the efforts and all this extra recording and editing I'm doing, which is really mm. filling up my time. I've had no time to play video games in the last like week and a half time. I've been just editing. And well, luckily, it's a pretty dry month. Nothing's coming out October 2023 to play. <laughs> that is a joke, right, Tim? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's been one of the busiest video game years in, well, years. <laughs> Uh, it's been jam-packed with releases. Uh, mm -hmm. Multiple games out this month that I want to play. There's games mm -hmm. from the last few months that I've still not played that I want to play, so it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. Uh, you probably... <laughs> viewers will probably notice a, a dip in episodes once Spider-Man 2 is out. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm getting it straight away, so I don't, if, if, it, if it dips, it's well, because I'm of you. Well, I'm getting it, you fool. <laughs> I won't be watching shit. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? We, if we still have things to cross off for October, we'll be crossing them off, Timothy. Well, I'll tell you what you can cross off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, you can support all the content <laughs> over at patreon.com slash Uh The bonus episodes for patrons have returned. In fact, uh, usually there's one a month. Uh, that will be the case going forward. But there's two this month. So uh, I'm sure the first one's already out by now. Uh, we haven't recorded the second one yet. So this is my reminder to Tim <laughs> that we have to do that. We'll get to it. My God. <laughs> <laughs> all right you know we, we are putting out a lot of like you know I, I know we've been gone for a while but we are doing a lot of extra stuff this month so you know it would be nice if you know we, you know if people showed their love you know you know oh. throw us a buck here or two or you know or hey at least you know like the stuff and try to share it with your friends or whatever that that'd be a nice thing to do yeah yeah, yeah. spread the show <laughs> yeah we're giving you lots of tricks, so why don't you give us some treats? Yeah. Hi. That's the show, everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> Keep watching scary movies, and we will see you next time.